So you will leave this video fully understanding what stall is for a centrifugal compressor and how we should pay attention to it and how it leads into a much bigger issue, which is surging. And this is a, a very kind of, I guess, weird concept, largely because we're not that familiar with like the actual physics of how a centrifugal works. And then you throw in these things like stall and surging, which on positive displacement compressors don't really uh, do anything. And I'm already throwing a whole bunch of really interesting words out there that you may not have heard before. That's okay. Let's talk about this and let's dive into what a stall is and how can we go about addressing it. How you doing? I hope you're having a great day. I am Holden Schamberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. I specialize in chiller systems. Today we're going to be talking about centrifugals and just how to deal with a stall. So a stall is quite literally as it sounds. And let's get into what a centrifugal is. Now let me grab my model here. So this is a centrifugal impeller. Now we use impellers like these just like it's in a water pump. And these centrifugals, what they have is a set of veins. And these veins inside of here are what capture our refrigerant. This is my suction side. This rim up here is my discharge side. So as refrigerant comes in, it gets sent through the impeller and out into the, the diffuser side of the, uh, the discharge cavity. So which this part of it is known as the volute. Anyway, quite literally what happens, each of these veins, as it's flowing refrigerant, well, a couple of these will stop flowing refrigerant. Not all of them, just a couple. And... It, as the condition gets worse, as we start to stall more, more of them will stop moving. And what that literally is saying is that the refrigerant becomes stagnant. It doesn't go away. It's just sitting there and it's not actually flowing. And the rest of the veins are still allowing refrigerant to push through them and, and, and get into the diffuser side of the volute. But... The ones that aren't, they part of what they do is they create a imbalance. The impeller has more refrigerant that's not flowing, and a lot of times what they'll do is they'll also be known as just a, a rotating, um, uh, a rotating stall, meaning that the veins may switch, they may momentarily stop, but as that one starts to flow again, another one beside it stops and. It just kind of rotates around uh, in, a, in just a continuous stalling. So that imbalance in the impeller tends to create a fairly low grumbling noise. It will be, it'll have a low pitch. The whole machine might have a slight kind of vibration to it that's not normally there. Uh, and this is a really important condition to catch. So because of that imbalance and that low, low end grumbling, the stall can heavily affect the bearings, especially if it's able to run like that for a very long time. Bearings do not do well with vibration and especially the, the ball bearings in this. So we may use a lot of compressors are using, say, a journal bearing. Don't worry about these, some of these specifics right now. It's not important. I'm just I'm throwing some terms out there. You can always look these up later. Uh, the ones that are important is you. Sh hopefully you'll know what a ball bearing is. Those in particular really do not like vibration. Vibration is just their worst enemy. So when we get into that stall state, that vibration is allowed to have an impact on those ball bearings or any other seals in the system. That's the other side of it. Uh, you can have a lot of seal issues. So let's say if you've got a YK centrifugal, you'll have a shaft seal issue uh, with a, a, an excessive amount of stalling. So that is what stall is, okay? It is just a, a the refrigerant literally just stops. It just can't push through the impeller or get thrown through the impeller, I should say, get into the physics of things. And centrifugals are not positive displacement compressors. They are non-positive displacement compressors. They're not direct compression. So a reciprocating compressor or a scroll compressor or even a screw, if you're familiar with those, 
those are direct compression. Those are positive displacement, meaning that a space is being made smaller and tightened around to force refrigerant into a, uh, a compressed state. We're literally taking something and smashing the refrigerant molecules together and sending them out. Uh, with a centrifugal, that is not what we're actually doing. What we're doing is we're throwing the refrigerant and we have ways of converting the energy, which is where the, um, the diffuser comes in, is being able to take that high kinetic energy of literally like throwing a baseball, but then convert that into a, um, uh, a, an actual pressure. So take that, that velocity, that energy of velocity being thrown through the impeller, uh, and then making that a physical pressure, which we consider the, you know, the, the high pressure of the discharge side through the diffusers. That's what the diffuser is. It's, it's a very narrow window. Anyway, I've got videos on what centrifugals are, how they work. You can check that out. So what will lead us into a stalling condition is high lift. So we use lift when we start talking about centrifugals. And lift is the difference, uh, subtracting the high pressure from the low pressure, uh, refrigerant pressure specifically. That difference between there, which we can just take our condenser pressure, evaporator pressure, we've got our lift. That is the lift that we measure across the impeller. And these can only handle so much lift before we start pushing them into a stall condition. For a lot of the impellers or the compressors I've worked on, usually somewhere around the 60 PSID is a, P, uh, a PSI deferential, so the difference. That, that's about where the stalling conditions may kind of start. It, so it, it does, there's a little more variance to it than that. So if we have a low load and depending on what our our superheat looks like coming back into the compressor there's other variables that can affect it but the the main one that you're going to notice the most is going to be that lift value so yeah right around 60 between 50 and 60 pushing into 65 that's where stall will become really prevalent now the other side of this a stall precedes a surge I'm going to do a separate video talking about surge. But as the compressor, as the lift gets higher, means our, our, our high pressure and our low pressure get further apart, then the, uh, the, the, the more veins are going to have issues, right? So I, I hope that concept is really kind of sinking in. We're just the refrigerant's not able to flow through there because there's too much difference between our inlet and outlet of the impeller. And while some of the veins are still able to push refrigerant through them, some of them won't be able to. And eventually the lift will become bad enough uh, or high enough that it'll convert into a surge. So... We'll get into a surge in a separate video, but that is the main concept of what a stall is, and we should address it. It's common to see stalls at really high loads and really low loads. So a low load stall is, means we, we've got, say, two or three degrees difference across our evaporator water. So we've got very little refrigerant passing through there, uh, but we're not able to lower our condenser water uh, temperatures. So if we're still running 80 degrees, 85 degrees for condenser water, but say we've got a 45 degree leaving water set point, we've only got 43, 44 degrees coming back. That is prime condition for a stall to take effect. And, and you, you, once you learn the sound, it'll become real apparent to you and you'll get used to, to understanding what that noise is and if you add a little extra load to the chiller or if you could cool that condenser water down some uh, you'll just hear that sound go away it'll just it'll just stop even though nothing else really seemed to change well it's 
because we, we lowered that lift value. So I would say that's the most common time I see a stall is say a low load, or if we're dealing with high load or we've got high, um, a high condenser water temperature issue where we just can't keep that down for some reason, uh, then you'll kind of ride into that stall state uh, and you're doing your best to stay out of a surge at that point. Anyway, that's enough for this video. I think that should communicate that well enough. And if you need to circle back around, you know, you can watch different parts of this a couple extra times and really try to, to get this concept uh, in your grasp. Like this is this is an important one to get your head around. Either way, if you enjoyed this, if you'd like some more training like this, go to chilleracademy.com. I've got a whole online course that is self-paced that you can go through. You can come out the other side well-versed in understanding what chiller systems are and how to work around them and just how to talk with them. So with that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you all around.